This is Akron, the fifth largest city in Ohio and the prior rubber capital of the world. In 1955, discussions began in Akron on how to fight the blight of deteriorating structures around the city. The need was to build a city of tomorrow. This began the 15-year process of organizing the project in order to create this new and improved downtown area. The post-war automobile industry brought thousands of jobs to Akron and contributed to the titan of industry that Akron was in the 1950s. In 1955, Chief Building Inspector John Kanopka conducted a survey of downtown buildings and found out that nearly half were in need of renovation, if not demolition. Nearly 60% of these buildings didn't even meet the fire code, and only 22% were sound. Akron city planners at the time were looking to build a civic focal point that would bring new life to downtown Akron. For this civic focal point, planners selected a 15 square block area that was bounded by Main, Bowery, Quaker, Ash, and Mill Streets as the best location to build the $20 million complex. The development required the raising of the eight-story Quaker Oats plant off South Howard Street. Local officials had much to consider with the project. The City Planning Commission approved the plan in September of 1958, and the City Council agreed to pay $1.8 million for the old Quaker Oats plant and tear it down. But how would the city pay for a cultural center? Mayor Byrd proposed that the city would spend $5 million to build a civic auditorium and parking garage. Private capital would pay for the rest. However, in November of 1959, Akron voters overwhelmingly rejected this issue to amend the city charter to fund the capital improvements, including the auditorium. Even though the Akron voters rejected this idea, in 1959, the Quaker Oats building was demolished, which signified the first step in the right direction towards building the plaza. Deliberations for how Cascade Plaza was going to be funded took about four years to finalize, but in 1963, the city initiated this project with the demolition and clearance of a 45-acre area in the Central Business District. This is important because it is the first main construction on the project and the beginning of the plaza itself. The next big victory for the city of Akron was that in 1967, the Flatiron Building was torn down. This paved the way for the rest of the plaza to be built upon. Mayor Boward played a huge role in this redevelopment, and this photo here shows him taking the first sledgehammer hit to the Flatiron Building during demolition. The Flatiron Building signified the last main obstacle that the city of Akron had ahead of it in terms of finishing the project, and the demolition of this building paved the way for the plaza to be completed as well as the surrounding areas. With the Flatiron Building out of the way, the completion and the finalization of the plaza took about another three years. Between 1967 and 1970, several key components of the plaza were completed. The first component of the plaza was the fountain. This fountain was designed by Don Drum and erected in 1968 with steel rods and cast aluminum panels. It stands in the center of the plaza and it served as a huge piece of artwork that would tie the plaza together. After that came the completion of the Cascade Parking Deck. The Cascade Parking Deck was officially built in 1969 and it costed roughly $10 million. The capacity of the garage was 2,150 cars and it was to serve as the main parking deck in the city. For anyone located where we are, it's wonderful. The attendants are very helpful. It's a great relief to have your car practically in the back of your office. I'm proud of Akron. Always have been. There was a great deal of scoffing about that hole in the ground. People were afraid it would be another boondoggle. But the combination of leadership, business, civic, and labor together with government, has succeeded in achieving this magnificent development towards the renaissance of downtown. This photo shows the first annual Cascade Plaza ice rink. This was opened in the winter of 1974. On June 26, 1970, the Cascade Plaza was dedicated. The plaza is roughly six and a half acres, and it was meant to be an inviting open space as well as a civic focal point for the people of Akron. Another big victory for Akron at the time was the purchase of Lowe's Theater in 1965. 
by the Akron Junior Chamber of Commerce. They organized a foundation to finance the purchase of the theater, and they converted it into a community hall. This 3,000-seat venue would later be known as the Akron Civic Theater. Akron Civic Theater is still there today, and it is one of the most popular destinations for downtown. The Interbelt Freeway was completed in 1970 and designed to bring economic revitalization to the city's struggling downtown yet it was almost immediately declared a failure because it never delivered the volume of cars promised or the revitalization. The freeway today stands as an eerily quiet reminder of lost ambitions and a forgotten neighborhood. However, Akron received the Knight Cities Challenge Grant, which gives $15 million to projects in 26 American cities. The last mile of the freeway is to be torn down by April 2018, and plans are to populate the freeway with potted plants, public seating, and programming that are meant to reconnect the two communities severed by the freeway 40 years ago. The Cascade Plaza and Interbelt Freeway never really panned out, but for now, in 2017, Akron has many new exciting additions coming. Akron has won several national grants in the past two years, and the Downtown Akron Vision Redevelopment Plan is currently working with the Akron community to create a common vision for downtown. This year alone, the Commission has had three meetings with Akron residents in order to gather suggestions for what the residents want in the future. The suggestions most touched upon are that Akron residents want improved green and public spaces, a more diverse and inclusive downtown, better connections for walkers and bikers, and a more defined downtown neighborhood. These meetings and national grants signify a time in which Akron is once again trying to redevelop and strengthen its inner core. Private developers and city officials are envisioning a downtown where restaurants and retailers give purpose to empty and historic buildings now languished at the epicenter of public investment. The Downtown Akron Vision and Redevelopment Plan is led by the Downtown Akron Partnership, Mayor Horrigan, and the City of Akron, and a steering committee with efforts supported by planning consultants and development strategies. In the 1950s and 60s, Akron, as well as many other cities in the U.S., were planning for the downtown of tomorrow. In the 1950s, city officials, planners, and the mayor were highly motivated in giving Akron this title as the downtown of tomorrow. Every type of technological advance that they could find, they wanted to get for Akron. The sad part about this is that like many other cities, the renewal project never was a huge success. The plaza is barely utilized today, and even the freeway that was thought to be a huge innovation at the time only brought one-tenth of the people into Akron as it promised. It also divided historically black neighborhoods, and it is in the process of being demolished as we speak. However, these past several years in Akron have brought on a new round of exciting redevelopment posed to make the downtown a better and more inviting area. The transformation of the Interbelt Freeway, as we see here in this drone video, to a forest gained a national attention from urban planners this new generation of Akronites has shown that they are very motivated to improve the downtown's core, much like the city planners and officials in the 1950s and 60s. I was born and raised in Akron for the past 21 years. This new wave of redevelopment has given me a stronger bond with my city, as well as new insights into the motivation of individuals in charge of improving Akron in the 50s and 60s. Akron is filled with the hardest working people in the country, and these waves of redevelopment show this work. Thank you for listening.